This is Twit. Let us go to our next question, which comes from Todd. Todd writes in, uh, actually, this is, in, <laughs> this is a little different because Todd wrote in uh, to me via my Tech News Weekly show, tnw at twit.tv was the email that Todd used. And Todd was writing about um, a couple of episodes that I've done where we have talked about passkeys. Many of you out there know what passkeys are, okay? Uh, so this is this is just for you to nod along with. Um, but Todd had some questions regarding passkeys, and it's funny because I had a friend recently who was visiting who said, so what are pass keys? And I had the very complex answer and I wanted to break it down, um, make it a little bit simpler for Todd. So Todd, uh, get ready, listen in, uh, but let me go ahead and read your question. <clears throat> You talked on this show, by the way, that show, Tech News Weekly, and other shows about a passkey. Love, this says, about a passkey. But I still don't know what a passkey is. I understand usernames and passwords the old way. It is text that I enter into a field on my computer or phone and that I keep on a post-it note tape to my computer monitor or my case and Outlook contact. <laughs> uh, usernames and passwords I get. I know what they physically are and how to use them. But after listening to two of your shows on passkeys, I still don't know what they are or how they're used or how they're generated, etc. Is it a physical key that I keep on my key ring? Who generates it? What is it, a bunch of text like a password? And again, who generates this, me or Amazon where I'm shopping or other websites that I buy stuff from? Beautiful question, Todd, and let's get into it. All right, so Todd asks first and foremost, um, is it a physical key? Well, Todd, no, it is not a physical key. There's nothing physical about it. You can't put it on a key ring. It is a digital key. It is a it's a it's a digital credential. It is a, a string of, of of characters that is stored on your device, and it's usually on your phone or on your computer. It is not anything physical. The confusion of that comes from people being aware of the fact that there are physical keys like a. Um, like a YubiKey that you plug in to authenticate yourself. And knowing that YubiKeys are FIDO compliant and everything else that's involved there, it gets mixed up. So I can understand why you would think that there is a physical key. There is not a physical key. That is just because when we talk about this authentication stuff, we talk about them kind of all together. Now, what exactly is a pass key? A passkey is a series of characters that is unique to each type of login that you do. Your device generates this unique series of characters and keeps it safe for you. So let's say we're back in the times of, uh, of, of prohibition and you are going to a speakeasy and you need to know the secret phrase, okay? When you go to the speakeasy for the first time, um, you prove you are who you are. The speakeasy says, okay, you're you and I trust you and you seem cool so you can come in. And then as you're coming in, you're, ha you're handed a little, uh, well, actually, no, you yourself have kind of a little um, secret phrase. And the person on the other end that's running the speakeasy has another part of that secret phrase. Okay. And then the next time you go to the speakeasy, you say your secret phrase and they compare it to theirs. And if the two line up, this, this metaphor is going to break apart a little bit, <laughs> but essentially when we're talking about uh, this, this, this credential, it's kind of a secret phrase, but it's just a secret phrase that computers understand. So let's leave it at that. You want to get into the speakeasy. This is what's generated at that moment. Okay. And then the way that you, this is where the other confusion comes in is that people think that your pin 
or your fingerprint or your face is your passkey. And that's not the case. In order to access the passkey that has been created, you show that you are you. And so the way that you show that you are you is by scanning your face, typing in your pin, or uh, putting down your fingerprint. That says you're you, you can access your passkey now, but it's the passkey itself that actually serves as a means of showing that you gain access, that you're cool, that you get to walk into the speakeasy. So who actually generates this passkey, right? Is it the speakeasy's, um, you know, public facing, is it the person at the door of the speakeasy or is it you yourself? Well, when you set up an account, let's say you go to Amazon and you already have an account, okay? You already have an account. You log in with your, your username and your password. You go into Amazon settings and you say, I want to set up a passkey. When you do that, your device, your phone, your computer, whatever, is going to create a string of characters. And this string of characters has two parts, okay? There is the private part that you keep in your pocket. <laughs> this is the part that the device that you have, your phone, your computer, holds on to. And then there's the public part. That's called the public key. And that gets handed to the website. And the website saves excuse me, that public key with your account. So if it's an email, uh, uh, you know, uh, boozehunter3000 at gmail.com, trying to get access to the speakeasy, that public part of the key gets handed over, ZX3174, blah, 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 blah. They hold on to that. You have your private part. And here's the thing. Your private key is never shared with the a site that's holding onto the public key. So Amazon does not know your private key and never will. Instead, what happens is that when you log in, the site says, okay, this is your email, boozehunter3000 at gmail.com. You're trying to gain access to the speakeasy. It looks at the public key and it says, all right, based on this, you should be able to answer the following question. And then it gives your device sort of a riddle. And only a device that has that private key you're keeping in your pocket is able to solve this riddle. And so then the site says, okay, you properly solve the riddle, you can come in. It uses the public part to verify with your device that has the private part that they match and that everything is good and that you are truly you. Now, when you are logging in to Amazon, to Google, to Microsoft, to whatever is using the passkey, the confusion that can come up is, oh, I'm taking my finger, I'm putting it down on the fingerprint reader. Or, oh, I'm looking at it, it's scanning my face. That's my password. No. You are proving to your device that you are you so that your device can actually share that information, can, can challenge that information and make sure that you uh, are able to log in. So I want to kind of step back because I do have a habit of going into metaphors <laughs> that can be a little confusing. Um, and so let's just take a look at this from, from the start. We're just going to make it simple. Let's say you have never had an Amazon account before. You go to Amazon.com, you sign up for an account, and you set it up with a passkey. So you give it your username and you say, go ahead and generate a passkey uh, using my, my email address and everything. And you're doing it from your computer. Your computer uh, has a password manager that supports passkeys. And in that moment, when it asks, do you want to set up a passkey for login for this? Then how can we do that? Okay. All I need to do is say yes. And your computer's password manager generates that private key that it keeps in its pocket, gives the 
it, it's almost like taking a piece of paper with a long string of characters on it. There are going to be people who are very, very knowledgeable about this who are cringing right now, but I'm trying to make this simple. Long string of characters on it, ripping it in half and never showing that private part to the other uh, site. Sticking the, the half that is private in the pocket, handing over the part that's public to the site. Now they've got that, right? Amazon has the public part. Then you leave Amazon. It's been long enough, so you get logged out because the cookie has expired. You come back, you try to log in, and it says, okay, you're telling me your email, and I see that I've got this public key. You handed me that half of the paper. Let me look at this public key. This string of characters means that you should be able to answer the following question if you have the private key in your pocket, because that's what gives you the ability to decoder ring this challenge. You, your device, uh, in this case, we remember we said we're doing it on the computer, uh, gets that challenge, that riddle, and your, uh, your password manager looks in its pocket and says, oh, yes, 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 yes. The answer is the blue moon at midnight. And it goes back and the website says, you got it. You're in. You're you. You can visit the site and you're logged in. So that is a little bit about how and where the passkey is generated, uh, what passkey pairing is, and kind of the authentication process that's involved. And thank you for sticking with me through the prohibition metaphor to what I feel like is the better metaphor there at the end. So your next question was, how do you use it? Well, using it is as simple as going to the website, wherever you or the, the service, and when you're prompted, because you'll actually get prompted, to uh, you, you know, to log in with your passkey, everything should kind of happen <laughs> automatically. But there may be a button that says uh, "Log in with passkey," and depending on what site or whether what service you're using to store your passkey, it can be more or less automatic. If you're using a password manager like One Password, One Password by the way is a sponsor on the network, uh, which is the the password manager that I use, I get a little prompt up in the top right corner that says, "Use your passkey to log into this." I say yes, and then One Password says, "Okay, I've got that private key in my pocket." but I'm not gonna show the website the answer to the riddle unless I know that you're actually you. So can you type in your password for the password manager? Or in my case, I just have to do a fingerprint scan. Then it goes, okay, you're actually Micah. So now I can answer this question for you. The riddle, the answer to the riddle to actually get into the site. Uh, so how do you use it? You just go to a site, you log in after you've set it up and you are able to uh, access it by handing over the answer to the riddle. And then last but not least, the question is, how secure is it? Well, here's the beauty about pass keys. Um, I had a great conversation with Steve Gibson about this uh, one time when Leo was out and I was uh, hosting Security Now in his place. And Steve said, there's something unique about the pass key situation, which is that typically, when something is easier than the method that came before it, it means that we are giving up a level of security for the convenience. And so because that's the typical case, one would expect that the ease through which we can log in using pass keys means that pass keys are less secure, right? It's too easy, so they must be less secure. That's how it usually works. If I'm trying to get into my house and I only have the lock that's part of the doorknob rather than the lock that's part of the doorknob and the deadbolt and the two locks that I have above it, that's less secure. My, I'm able to get through the door much easier than if I had those extra locks. This is one of those rare cases, Steve points out, that it is both more convenient and more secure than your standard method. And that is because, think about many a data breach out there. I'll use one great example, 23andMe. Um, 
they used a, the, the people who accessed 23andMe's information used a technique called credential stuffing. And that just means they tried a bunch of usernames and passwords and found ones that actually worked. And that is because people are reusing passwords. And so one site gets breached, they use that password on another site, and then the person's able to gain access to all of them, right? Well, yeah, makes sense. That would happen. And so that's where pseudo random passwords generated by password managers are safer, right? Because then you don't have a, uh, a password that you're reusing across sites. So people say, well, let's do that. Let's set up pseudo random passwords. Now we look and we see that the next type of data breach is going to an insecure site or less secure site, or perhaps it's a very secure site, but they've you know figured out some, some method of uh, social engineering to gain access to the site. And they steal usernames and passwords and they gain access to that because that site is holding on to your username and your password. So now it has that information. The, the bad actor has that information they can get in, right? Let's think about pass keys. With pass keys, if someone were to go to the site and steal the username and the pass key that's tied to it, they only have that piece of the paper that I ripped in half that's the public half. They don't have the private half. Without the private half, they're not able to access the account. They don't have the necessary bit the decoder ring to solve the riddle to actually gain access to the account. And they need that in order to gain access to the account. So pass keys are inherently more secure because of that. Another reason they're more secure is because it's much harder to give away a pass key than it is to give away a password. So with that, the Phishing attempts are are less. The the ability to access those pass keys are less. Without that private key, it's much harder to gain access to that account through these more standard means. And those more standard means of of bad actors are used more frequently because they're easier than having to devote resources toward talking to someone over a period of time, gaining their trust, then getting their username and password that way. Much easier to go and steal a database worth of passwords and usernames uh, because you can you know, do that once and get access to a lot. So how secure are pass keys? More secure than passwords, more secure than pseudo random passwords, and arguably more secure than pseudo random passwords paired with two factor authentication. Um, there are some cases where pass keys are just used as a means of two factor authentication, but over time, we're going to see more and more the use of pass keys as just that single mean, means of authentication with some other form of two-factor, like a, a, a generated code if you want it. <laughs> <laughs>